earth, earth was cherished because people depended upon it. And then came in, came in, and you have two cultures that tried to figure out how to interact with each other. The whole dualism, either or mentality, was then put upon Jesus and those in his teachings that came after him. Because Jesus, when he lived, did not live dualistically. There wasn't the split. There wasn't a hierarchy. He lived a very mystical life, actually. Mystical meaning very much in touch with at all times and every breath God is, that type of thing. There was a both and concept. While yes, there was definitely a hierarchy of people, yes, there were slaves, etc., and there was the wealthy and all of that, they were very, very well aware of trying to become into God's kingdom on earth. And that's a whole debatable thing, even of, in, in, even of itself. In the Jewish faith, you are a good Jew if you question. I loved Yentl. How many of you saw Barbara? <laughs> you know? And remember, I, I love those scenes. I love the scenes of watching when, you know, people are talking about scripture and they're arguing about scripture. And really engaged. That was the culture in which Jesus was raised. At 12 years old, he was going to the synagogue to argue with elders. <laughs> Can you imagine if a 12-year-old here came at a kids' club and started arguing with Reverend Neal? <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> you know, it was, you, you were taught young. You were taught at a young age to interact, to question. Interestingly enough, if you're a good Christian, you do not ask questions, do you? To be a good Christian, you do not ask questions. That's kind of, so I was raised that way. And I think a lot of us were raised that way. So today we get to ask a lot of questions. Lastly, years went on after Jesus died and, different, and the, um, the, the Hebrew people um, went through different transitions in, in, their, um, in their life as a people. Their temple was destroyed, it was built again, it was destroyed again. And imagine if you were a people where you know, people came and decided to trash the building. Well, that wouldn't be a bad idea. <laughs> but then imagine if it was rebuilt really gloriously, fabulous, and then it came and was destroyed again. You know, you're, you're kind of become a, maybe we shouldn't put all our focus into the ch church building. Maybe we should really look at our faith from within and have, you know, home groups, if you will. You know, the, the Jewish faith became, the, and the Jewish people became an incredibly imp oppressed people. An incredibly oppressed people. So let's see, if you didn't want to be enslaved and continue to be oppressed, maybe I should distance myself from my Jewish heritage. That's what ended up happening with the Christian faith in the second AD around there, second, third AD. The people who were in the Christian Jewish sect, the Jesus movement, because it really was kind of a Jesus movement, those who were in the Jesus movement started to distance themselves from their Jewish ancestors. Not because Jews were bad, but because they were becoming a very oppressed people. And the Christians kind of wanted to separate themselves and say, oh no, we're not them. You know, I, I love how history repeats itself. We do it over and over and over again. So as the Christian people began to separate themselves, they still had about, ooh, 120, 200 different w ways of experiencing Christianity. M even greater diversity than we have today. And then something good or bad happened, I'm not sure which. Some would say it's bad, some would say it's good. Constantine became converted. And he was one of those emperors back then. And he became converted to Christianity. But what he ended up doing was taking, remember, there's a whole banquet of ways of experiencing Jesus whole bunch of different sects, if you will, and he became part of one of them. Well, that's what got imprinted into law. He took this one over here, threw these that way over there, and this is the religion that was now the one that everyone had to subscribe to. And how it started to live itself out and it's happened in Islam, and it has happened in every faith tradition that has been, become the governmental religion, is that it became very structured, very hierarchical, 
It was, if you will, kind of the Roman point of view to become very structured. And it is said that you cannot rule a nation by allowing people to ask questions. And so it is that that openness to asking questions ended. And firm hierarchies of me, Tarzan, you, Jane, <laughs> really got imprinted. And so that's some of the background that I think is really important for us to take a look at when we move forward into looking into um, our scriptures today. The last thing, it was really interesting, so many of us grew up with the King James Version. King James, Chip, I think you're going to be talking about the King James Version. I think you, that was on, on your list. We've got to understand, here's a perfect example. I was at a Queer Nation protest years ago. And I had this guy from the local Bible college, this is in Santa Cruz of all places, comes up to me and says, uh, we start talking, of course, about uh, scripture. And he says, that's not what the Bible says. I said, well, how do you know? He says, because I do. It's written right there. And I said, well, you know, it, it's gone through different translations and such. He goes, no, the Bible was written in English first. <laughs> well, first it was written in Aramaic. Then it was written in Hebrew. Then it was written in Greek. And then it was probably written in German, probably next, Latin. And then works its way down into English. And then, of course, again, just like Constantine, when King James was in power, he needed a Bible that said what he needed it to say, so he commissioned a Bible to be rewritten. So it would say what a human wanted it to say, and not necessarily what God wanted it to say. So this is fact, this is reality, and this is the bias that we all come to. And then, of course, when you put prejudice on top of things, we get what we get today, which is this incredible struggle for people who identify as gay or lesbian or bisexual. And so with that, um, we invite you to, um, to, to look forward. And there's the, all of these came from Gateway, is it Gateway, BibleGateway.com, I believe? It's on the top of some of the pages. I encourage you to go to that, and you can find about, ooh, 25 different translations of scripture, um, any passage you want. There is a new Bible, and this is a short plug that I will say. Um, there is a new Bible uh, in the works called the Inclusive New Testament. The, new, uh, the inclusive Bible, the New Testament's done and Psalms is done, and the rest of it is coming. It's done by priests for equality, not a gay group, anything like that, but it's an incredible translation. And when that comes, comes into being, uh, we'll be uh, showing that and encouraging folks to take a look at that.